So Omar, another two years at Leighton Orient. It's been quite a journey so far and I'm, I'm sure you're looking forward to the next step as well. 100%. I want the journey to continue. I've really enjoyed it. Coming back home, being a part of something special. I'm a local boy. It's my local team. Um, so yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be a part of what we're doing here. The club's got so much potential and I'm happy to be a part of it. Happy to play as much of a part as I can. Um, it's a club that I've always admired as a local lad. I've always kind of said to myself, I want to come back here eventually. But now that I'm here, I'm like, I can see myself potentially even ending my career here. Um, so yeah, I, I just really enjoyed my time so far and long may it continue and I'll do my best to drive this club in, in the right direction. I think last time we spoke it would have been kind of in the midst of kind of end of season celebrations, it might have been a bit hazy for, for you at, at certain times, but have you had time to kind of reflect on, on the season we've had and, and the memories and, and you know those special moments? Ah, yeah, 100%. It's been such a special, special season that will live long in the memories. Um, yeah, just the bond, and that's another thing that's made it really important for me about the decision of staying. You know, I come every day when I came into the dressing room, training, matches, I, I, there was this excitement and enthusiasm with just walking through the door and just stepping away from that. It's like you never know where you're going to end up and what it's going to look like, and it's something really, really special, a real, real good group. Um, quite a lot of us are still going to remain. So, um, so, yeah, it's played such a massive part, but just looking at the season and what we've done and what we've achieved, um, there's a real bond and a connection with this group that will last a lifetime. Yeah, and um, yeah, we, we celebrated in good fashion, that's for sure. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a lovely, lovely um, season, lovely time with the lads. And hopefully we can continue to build on that. So, yeah. You mentioned, obviously, a, a good core of that group will stay together. Obviously, some will move on, and, and that's kind of the nature of football. It's, it's never the same kind of season to season. So part of that challenge now is, is building a, a slightly newer team, a new look team for League One, and, and one that I'm sure will look to rise to a new challenge. Yeah, 100%. You have to adapt. And I think we've proven it last season over the years. You know, we had a previous manager in Kenny Jackett whose style was a little bit different, but still had the kind of core team. We had to adapt. We brought in players who brought an added value to our team. Some of them are not going to be here next season. It's inevitable when any team does as well as we, do, we did. But um, yeah, I think we've still got a good core and a good dressing room. That is half the job done. And when you can maintain that, I think there's no reason why with the right additions, we can't go on and, and be a really competitive side in League One. So, yeah. You are an experienced League One defender as well. Um, obviously played a, a lot of games in that level as well. What, what does it take for this Orient team to, to go in and, and adapt and, and pit themselves amongst the teams there? I guess the first stage would be just for there to be a level of belief system for a lot of the lads that probably haven't been at that level, just to find their feet and, and really see it, that the gap isn't as massive as, as they may think it is. Um, but once we got, get over that hurdle, I think it's safe to say we've got enough quality in the dressing room. And if we can add to that, um, I don't see why we, we can't compete at that side. We've shown that we can adapt in, in being a, a footballing side, but also a, a direct at times, you know, and adjust in certain games. And I think having that in our locker is going to be, be needed, but I think we're going to have to really drive ourselves physically to be in the best possible shape we can. And then you, there's all the other things that come with it, you know, just making sure that we can keep people fit, maintaining um, yeah, that, that standard of fitness will be, will be key moving into the next season. Because I think a lot of teams at that level really demands the depth in the squad. Um, so calling on players is going to be a lot more of the case. So I'm sure there'll be more additions that get included into the squad. Um, so yeah, yeah, just, just that really. Uh, I'd be interested to know how you kind of reflect on your two times here, two years here, sorry, um, in terms of your growth kind of on and off the field. Obviously there's been a kind of um, a side to you off the field which has grown in terms of your PFA, PFA role and the EFL um, Community of the Year award that you won. I just wonder how you kind of reflect on, on, on your personal growth as well. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of growing that's taken place. And I just think this, a lot of growing takes place when you're planted in the right space. When you're, you're, pl you're, you're planted in good soil, I'm just like going back to my roots. And I think I've been able to just flourish being back home, um, both on and off the pitch. Um, because it means more, you know, my local area, I, I call it a labour of love, you know, just serving my team, the local community. It just, it means so much to me. And it's something that goes beyond like, you know, sometimes you play the game and it's all about the money and it's about profit. But I think something that's really quite purposeful, me being associated with this club, this local area, that's brought the best out of me. And I only think that, yeah, I'm only gonna to continue to build on that 
and, and just make a big of an impact both on and off the pitch um, to drive and leave the shirt in a better place than it ever was before and to leave this local area in a better place than it's ever been. Does it give you that kind of satisfaction knowing that at least for another two years you're here as a footballer and, and those relationships you have formed in the community, whether it's local schools or um, any other schemes you're in, that you can kind of continue to help them grow and, and you know, see those same faces and, and you know, keep working on what you are working on? Yeah, 100%. It definitely was part of the decision making. You know, all that I've started, you know, I just don't want it to be in vain. You know, I've done stuff where you've done it in that area and you've left and it just no longer is existent and I'm like we've got a real opportunity to to build on that it's the first team I've actually re-signed for fortunately enough I've like had the opportunity to have people offer contracts and I've turned them down but like I think that's an indication me re-signing is how special this club is to me and um, yeah the legacy that I do want to leave um, which is bigger than me but it's more so just meeting the needs of those that are around me those who looked like me once upon a time when I was their age um, so yeah, yeah, it's definitely massive, massively important for me to, to leave an impact and, and to impact this local area. In terms of the return to, to Skybet League 1, there's obviously a, a few little milestones here and there. Today we had the, the fixtures come out and a trip to Charlton away in, in the opening day of the season. Seems like a, a pretty big one to, to mark that return. No, nah, it'll be lovely, lovely. Somewhat of a derby, so to say, it'll be, it'll be nice, nice, yeah. So I, I think it's a good game to get us prepared and ready for what life at League One will look like. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing with the prospects of, of just us competing at that level. Um, there's going to be, and I think it'll be really good for the lads, you know, they, they've shown in big games last season that they were able to rise to the occasion. And I like to think there's going to be a lot more of those, you know, a lot more bigger stadiums, a lot more of a bigger following. And um, I think it's only going to bring the best out of the, a, a young group that we have. So, um, so yeah, I can't wait to get stuck in and compete at that level again um, and hopefully drive this, drive this team in the right direction. I spoke about your kind of growth off the field, but I think the club as well in, in your time here, especially in terms of the fans and the atmosphere we've been building, Last season, you know, very special, some of the afternoons we had here and I guess just finally looking forward to some, some more special days next year with the supporters here. A hundred percent. They played such a massive part. They came out in their numbers and they were loud when, when needed. And I think I can just recall one. So especially the away games, there was just something special about travelling fans. And I think now they've got big occasions, big, big day out, going to certain stadiums, be it Derby, Portsmouth, even Charlton. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm hope, hoping they can continue to build on what they've done last season because they definitely played a massive part in pushing us over the line when it got difficult in certain, in certain moments. Um, they came out in their numbers, still supported us. And um, yeah, it's, it's significant for us as players, you know, just the atmosphere, the noise. It, 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 it does play a massive part when people refer to it as the 12th man, you know, it's there for a reason. So um, we're going to need them more than ever this se next season. And um, yeah, just looking forward to seeing them coming out, you know, and making, making their voices heard. So yeah.